let's try this one. So this is kind of eight things that people um, believe to be true about different animals, but are actually false. Right. Number one, bears hibernate. What? <laughs> I've been lied to my whole life. <laughs> we'll see. Um, while it is true that bears retreat into their dens for the winter, they do not hibernate. True hibernation is a voluntary action where an animal slows down its bodily functions to survive a difficult period. Bears don't do that. Instead, they go into a state called torpor. You can think of torpor as a very deep sleep. It serves a similar purpose as hibernation, but there's one very important difference. Animals in torpor can wake up, and bears do, several times over the winter. This might seem like an in insignificant difference, but if you're out and about in a bear area in winter, well, let's just say watch where you step. So it's still it's it's close, kind of true, yeah. but not... Maybe not what we like, think exactly. What do they mean by several times in the winter? Every night or like three, four, four or five times in the winter? Like, Probably that. Yeah, that's not much. Yeah. So it's close to hibernation, but not quite. Yeah. Also, like if they don't hibernate, like I'm wondering like what animals do. Because apparently it's a thing. Yeah. Um, number two, that dogs are colorblind. Uh, for a long time, people thought that dogs see the world in black and white, like an old-timey TV, but they can actually see colors. Granted, a dog's color vision isn't as good as a human being's. They have no receptors for red or green colors, but they do see blue and yellow. So they're not completely colorblind. They simply see the world as a person with red-green colorblindness would. Hmm. Huh. Uh, number three, mother birds abandon chicks a human touches. Like that's a myth I never even or a thing I've never even heard. I don't think I heard that on Family Guy or something. Like don't touch it or the mother will not accept it. <laughs> uh, every kid gets taught to not touch baby birds fall uh, fallen from the nest. The mother can smell the human on them and will abandon the chick. Except they don't do that. Most birds have a very poor sense of smell and probably couldn't detect your stink on their babies if, even if you hadn't showered in a week. Some mother birds might abandon a nest if they see you messing with it, though. But that's not because of your smell. Their bird brain simply assumes the baby birds are good as dead and they should cut their losses. But even then, it's more likely that the mother bird will try to fight you off at first if the chicks have hatched. They are mothers, after all, and won't abandon their kids lightly. Uh, number four, that ostriches bury their heads in the sand. Uh, speaking of bird brains, ostriches sure are dumb. If they get scared, they'll stick their heads uh, in the sand and think the predator won't see them. Of course, you probably guessed that they don't do that. There's not a single known instance of an ostrich burying its head in the sand. Uh, just think about it. How would it breathe? Even ostriches aren't that dumb. If you see an ostrich that looks like burying its head, it probably uh, it's probably taking care of its eggs. They bury their eggs in the ground and regularly turn them around to keep them warm. I mean, where do you think that one comes from? Uh, to me, it may be cartoons, because I've definitely seen cartoons where ostriches do that, but like, I don't know if that came from somewhere else. I don't... I'm surprised. Like, I, I can't believe we made a big deal out of that. It's not even true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like, uh, y you would think it would come from somewhere. Yeah. You know. Uh, number five, this one I've definitely heard. heard. Uh, goldfish have three-second memories. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, we often compare forget, uh, forgetful people to goldfish, but that's doing the fish wrong. Instead of three weeks, their memory can span three months. Oh, dang. <laughs> um, in fact, they're smart enough to tell the time of day. Researchers found that goldfish would rather... Uh, would gather around an automated food dispenser shortly before feeding time, implying they could tell when it was time for dinner. Uh, they can even learn to drive cars? What? Next time you see a goldfish in a sad plastic bag at a pet store, feel sorry for it. It will remember being there. There was a link to the learning to drive car story, but I don't think I'm going to go there. Uh, number six, uh, that opossums hang by their tails. Now, this one I've you know definitely seen depicted in cartoons and things. Um, a family of possums hanging in a row by their tail is a common sight in cartoons. In reality, though, it just doesn't happen. Baby possums can sometimes hang by their tails, but that's because they slipped off the branch they were perching on. That's like looking at a baby that tumbled on all fours and deducing that people are uh, quadrupedal. Adult possums don't hang by their tails at all. Uh, they're much too heavy for the tails to support them. You know, I know uh, in... 
Oregon, um, that it's common for people to like hit possums with their cars. Oh, but I've never seen one. Yeah, I haven't seen one either. I saw a raccoon recently. I think maybe twice. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, I've only seen. I think I saw a raccoon in the wild maybe like once. Okay. Um, I saw it like twice in one week. I don't know if it's the same raccoon or like different raccoons or what, but was it around your neighborhood? Uh, yeah, it was kind of around the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, they do like to get into garbage. Yeah. So I could, mm -hmm. I could be. They're funny creatures, though. You know, they they look like crooks, like burglars. Yeah, they're cute. I like raccoons. They are cute. Remember that story where this raccoon was climbing this building? It was like a 14-story building. Oh, no. And it got all the way to the top. <laughs> Holy cow. People were cheering it on, like hoping it didn't fall. And it was clinging on for dear life, man. I couldn't <laughs> believe it got there. I wonder what would even inspire it to climb like that. I don't know. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, number seven, bulls hate the color red. Uh, the Torador waves uh, his red cloth and the bull attacks him. Clearly, the bull must hate the color red. Sorry to disappoint you, but a bull couldn't hate the red because it doesn't know what it, what it is. Like dogs, bulls can't see red. So how could they hate it? Instead, they get annoyed by the movement of the bullfighter's cape or maybe by the fact that the bullfighter is constantly harassing the animal. The red color actually has a more macabre purpose. It hides bloodstains, whether from the bull or the bullfighter. What do you think of bullfighting? It's barbaric. It is, yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. I think, I want to say uh, my brother um, went to, like, he, he for a while when he was in the military, was stationed in South Korea. Hmm. And, like, I think he said he went to one. Did they have that there? I guess so. I think oh. that's where he was. Okay. But yeah, I don't know if I'd want to see that. I guess you, there's always the chance that you might see the bull actually gore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're okay with that. Get that jerk. <laughs> you know how many bulls he's killed? <laughs> but you know, yeah, these this day and age, it does seem like a very barbaric thing for you know to keep doing. It's just for sport. Yeah. Oh man, I've been um, listening to that uh, Quentin Tarantino podcast. Oh, he's got one. Yeah. Oh. And he talks about how, like, um, they eventually outlawed it in, in the States, um, maybe in, like, the 60s or something. But, like, you ever see, like, an old-timey Western where, like, there will be a, a horse running and it'll just, like, flip, like, ass over tea kettle? Like, they apparently did this thing they call a flying W where they would actually tie a rope, like, to the horse's leg and just have it run at full speed and then it would, like, jerk them oh. over. And he said, like, it ended up, like... A lot of times it would kill the horse. Gee. And so they were very, like, uh, barbaric. But he said even when it was outlawed in the States, they would still do it in Europe. Mm. So, like, if Westerns were shot in, like, Spain or whatever, they would still do those. And, like, they did them for a long time. I don't know where people get these ideas from, man. Why do that? Ugh. I mean, I don't know. It was a different time. <laughs> they yeah. didn't give a crap about horses. <laughs> hey, I heard... Uh, just like you know, a couple centuries ago, uh, in the, in America, people would just leave their kids on the side of the road, hoping somebody else would find them and like raise them. Like people, people were different back then, man. They were just they didn't care about their own kids. They sent them to work in factories, of course. I mean, kids were just tools. They were nothing else. Well, I mean, the uh, you know the boomer generation, where so many people were born, that was a big thing. Is like. People would have like uh, farms too, and be like, basically, they just want, needed a cheap workforce. It yeah. was like survival. Like, well, and also, you know, it's sad, but it's like, uh, you know, there was they knew that like there's a good chance a kid or two could die from yeah. some For disease sure. or something too. Yeah. So it's like, well, we better have some extras. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was man, that was a rough, uh, rough time. Yeah. But still, it's a, it's like one thing to to where like okay, there's no way I can take care of this kid. Maybe I'll go um, leave it at an orphanage. Besides, just uh, you know what, I'm just gonna leave Johnny in the middle of the road yeah. and hope for the best. <laughs> That's insane. Like they would sell their kids to people. They would. Like, it was just wild times. Like I get why it was called the Wild West, man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. And then the last one, number eight, uh, that lemmings commit mass suicide. Uh, sometimes during migration, a horde of lemmings uh, decides they just don't want to live anymore. They jump off tall cliffs by the thousands to die and prevent population issues. Sure, lemmings sometimes do fall off cliffs during migrations, and people sometimes die in 
traffic during rush hour, but we don't claim that's a suicidal human tr tradition. The myth of lemming suicide comes from the Disney-produced documentary White Wilderness, which showed the animals pulling off the stunt. But the lemmings didn't do it voluntarily. The filmmakers imported a horde of lemmings to Canada and intentionally herded them off a cliff. Oh, my god! It wasn't suicide. It was genocide. Oh, my God. Talk about animal cruelty. What the heck? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they're making a nature documentary, and they're like, you know what would really sell this? Yeah. If we killed just a boatload of lemmings. Let's make some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only reason I knew it was because of the old lemmings video yeah. games. Oh, speaking of which, like, I don't know if it's any good, but I saw a trailer for this new video game called Humanity, mm -hmm. and it basically looks like lemmings only with people. <laughs> okay. It looked interesting. I might have to check it out. Right. Um, but... Uh, Good Lord. And be nicer to animals, folks. All right? <laughs> I just... <laughs> the fact that that came across someone's brain and, like, a whole production crew was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, you know, I fear that humans have a little too much creativity <laughs> when we're coming up with these kinds of ideas. Let's uh let's run thousands of these things off the cliff. Well, we might still uh, bullfight bulls, uh, but uh, at least uh, we don't <laughs> commit lemming genocide yeah. anymore. <laughs> so maybe as a society, we're getting a little bit better, yeah. a little, <laughs> little uh, on the upside. Yeah. Oh wow! So should we wrap this bad boy up? Yes, yeah, do it. All right, guys. Well, we thank everybody very much uh, for watching and listening. If everything goes to the plan, I think next week we can do a review of the Flash. Yes, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you will, please subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to a podcast and audio form on your podcast service of choice. Leave us thumbs up, positive reviews, uh, comments, all that good stuff. And if you want, you can come and uh, follow me on Twitter at Zach Jones Live. That's Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. And that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care.